In the years since the death of George Floyd, calls for racial justice have touched nearly every aspect of our daily lives, including the businesses and companies we support with our almighty dollars. Those businesses and companies, big and small, were called upon to make changes. So my next panel is here with the success stories and the failures we've seen over the last 12 months. Please welcome Senior Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Practitioner Akin Akinola and Karen John, the CEO of Black Owned TO. Thanks for being with us today. It's good to have you. And Akin, I'm going to start with you. You work with the Canadian Center for Diversity and Inclusion. How has the Canadian workplace changed in this one year? What have the bigger companies done in terms of inclusion and diversity? You know, one of the things we're learning as we uh, continue to navigate this reckoning that has happened um, since the killing of George Floyd is to ask not how Canadian employers are doing, but rather to ask how are black professionals responding to a lot of the changes that these organizations are trying to invoke? How are you as a black employee or as a black professional navigating the landscape of corporate candor any differently? as a result of, you know, a review in the DNI framework or policies or interventions that have been enacted since George Floyd's killing. Um, there certainly is a reset. I believe that the organizations that are making real changes, which are making commendable changes, are the ones who are investing time, money and resources into um, reviewing, uh, scrutinizing and, where necessary, overhauling um, systems, policies, even leadership and structures that continue to perpetuate exclusionary barriers to black mobility in the workplace. Such accountability partnerships and such organizations are working to drive greater supply diversity, boardroom representation, and a slew of actions which, if fully realized, can really transform the socioeconomic experience in many black communities. Okay, so that sounds like a lot of successes. And I'll come back to you a little bit uh, later, Akin, to talk a little where we need the work. But I want to go to Karen now, because you started Black Owned TO as a passion project, and it has grown. So how many <laughs> small businesses do you have on board right now? And what has this growth been like for you? This growth has been amazing. So I started Black Owned Toronto as an Instagram page um, around the same time last year. Um, probably like a few weeks before the George Floyd murder happened. So I had a very, very small following at the time. And um, once that killing happened, obviously it shocked the entire world and the Black Lives Matter movement exploded. And with that, people wanted to buy Black more because it's one of the easiest ways for our community to support one another, but it's also one of the easiest ways for allies to support us. So I started receiving tens of thousands of followers within the same week of um, the George Floyd murder. So um, I have connected with hundreds of business owners. I'm also in the process of opening up a retail store in Scarborough Town Center, which is a major mall here in Toronto, obviously. And I think a lot of the backlash I've gotten about the store um, is when I say I'm opening a store with a focus on Black entrepreneurs, people are always like, well, that's kind of racist. But if you walk into any major mall in Canada, it's extremely, extremely rare that you find a black owned store within a major mall. Karen, I know that you have gotten some support from, from some fairly big companies uh, to help you stay going. And this is definitely part of the success story. Which companies have helped you? Um, I have a few companies that have helped me. Um, GoDaddy has been one of the biggest helps. They were one of the first companies to ever reach out to me. And they actually helped me um, create a giveaway so I could give away about 20 websites to Black business owners, which is really, really cool. Um, CIBC has been very, very helpful. I've had like a lot of conversations with them about, you know, how the Black community feels about banking and kind of the barriers we have there. And we've been working together to have those conversations, which has been really, really exciting. Um, Interact I've been working with as well. They helped sponsor my store that I'm going to open and they've been like great partners so far. So I've had a lot of help from major companies and I really appreciate it because um, I, I like to see major companies stepping up and it's nice to see it done in a genuine way because um, like to be honest, a lot of major companies, they, they talk the talk, but they don't necessarily walk the walk or really sure support in really, really big ways. So I, I appreciate the companies who really step up. 
Yeah, and that's why I like to call them out on the show, because we <laughs> want them to know, like, be organically good, and some of that goodness will come back to you. You will be mentioned uh, in good ways. I want to go over to Akin now, uh, finally, just to talk about some of your recommendations for Corporate Canada moving forward, because there is still a lot of work to be done. Oh, there really is a lot of work to be done, Tracy, but it's you know, it's really important. And I think, you know, this really is a watershed moment. We are still at an inflection point because I think that, you know, there is such an enormity of changes that need to happen. But the fact of the matter is a lot of those changes are already happening. There are certain conversations which I think that only if you have experienced the Canadian landscape, the Canadian corporate landscape, as a Black employee or a Black professional, uh, there's certain um, scenarios that only you can speak to. So I think so much collaboration is needed between the Black employee and the head of HR or the chief diversity and inclusion officer. Something else we need to consider is, uh, you know, the, the emotional tax and the psychological impact and the added layer of neuroses that you have to contend with as a black professional navigating the corporate structure through the white gaze. I think that a scenario in which um, leaders are coming together with the employee resource groups, with senior management to have open, honest, unfettered conversations about how to grow the um, environment and make sure the environment is stimulating to black growth, black professional growth, to make sure that we have representation across the board. It's one thing to have a lot of black employees on the front lines, but are they proportionally represented at the senior leadership levels? Are they part of the executive team? Are they in the C-level suite? This is all part of the reset that needs to happen. Akin, thank you for that. It's got to start from the top. You make so many really good points. Incredible information. Thank you both for joining us today. So